Hey, it's my friends. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, and I'm really excited to be sitting uh, talking with you from my home in Dubuque. I'm uh, self-quarantined, like many of us are, trying to avoid going outside if I don't have to, or not going outside, but being around other people, going to public places, doing my part, I guess, to try and comply with what the officials are telling us about not uh, being a part of spreading the virus so that uh, the healthcare system is able to deal with a lot of stuff going on that's hard for us to understand. Um, uh, looking forward to spending these days with you, coming for, for a few minutes to talk about some things we can do to cope with the stress as families and as individuals, uh, to deal with our anxiety, to deal with our fears, to deal with some of the normal emotions we can expect to experience during these times. I'm sure that your family is dealing with them uh, much as my uh, much as my family is with them conversation and times of not being sure what's going on, times of a little bit of worry, uh, trying to find some fun in it. We're going to be talking about some, some hints and some tips that can help you with mental health, emotional intelligence, uh, just kind of coping with this situation. It's really a historic and never before seen time. Even the fact that we can talk like this via internet is really something that's never been seen before. Uh, in the midst of a crisis like this. It's really something brand new. So we want to find some ways that we can help each other stay together as a community, uh, remind ourselves that though we're not meeting together in school, we are still in this together. We want to support and encourage each other. Uh, yesterday was a delight to start and talk about uh, the, the importance of trying to focus on building stronger family relationships, challenge to both kids and adults not to drive each other nuts, uh, certainly at this time, it's been a, a few days of, of being out of school and dealing with ever-changing news. Uh, probably you're driving each other nuts. Uh, we have to be intentional about not really getting on each other's nerves, so to speak, and really working hard to build an intentional conversation and time. For the adults out there, those of you that are, are working and on a, still on a work schedule where you're needing to go someplace, uh, probably your workplace is also stressful. And so coming home, you may have even less uh, energy than you might have had in the past. We all have to be intentional about making our homes a safe place where we're building and encouraging and nurturing each other. So I talked about doing a family journal as an example and taking a few minutes every day to document your experiences during this. It's a way to have a good conversation and, and encourage each other. I want to broaden today and talk about a more general mental health, emotional intelligence concept that relates to building a stronger family. And that is, uh, and this is something that the adults will understand and older kids will even understand it. It's something to be talked about um, as we grow up. But if you talk to the older adults, if you talk to the parents and you ask them uh, about the things or the times when they made the best changes in their lives, when they recognized that there was something that they needed to do to get better, Almost always those came out of a time that was difficult or a circumstance that was challenging. And, uh, I, I kind of say, I like to say it this way, that the best changes we ever made in our lives were immediately preceded by a really bad experience. And often those experiences, those situations are things that we have no control over. This uh, COVID-19 situation is definitely one of those. We can worry and we can listen and we can hear and we can wonder, but we have no real control over the circumstance itself. When it's something where the whole world is in fact shutting down, uh, it's hard to know what to do as we sit in our kitchen and um, wonder how we cope with it ourselves when we really have no control over it. So we have to ask ourselves in circumstances that we have no control over, our natural tendency may be to default to anxiety and even despair and hopelessness, or do we view this as an opportunity to grow stronger, to get better, to, to actually ask questions and develop relationships and find strategies that we'll be able to use in future situations as well. And that's the challenge for us. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about what's happening at your house. You know more than me, but perhaps you've reached a place where, okay, this is this is really a strange thing and I'm a little bit tired or we're a little bit fatigued or we're a little bit bored or all of these kinds of, of things that can happen as we hunker down into our homes and, and get stuck, uh, not sure what to happen next. And in those times, we can start to default to simply existing, 
to just going through the motions, to essentially becoming numb to what's happening, to becoming almost bored with the situation, and then just occupying our time with things that actually are not going to be helpful to us and can create a sense of, um, well, again, I, I guess I would use the word despair or hopelessness or powerlessness. And that's something to be avoided. We want to work against that. We're, we're going to resist being numb. We're going to resist kind of falling into neutral and, and not moving forward. We're going to resist inactivity. And we're going to begin to grow stronger by making intentional choices to do things that challenge us, that keep us active, and that help us to grow stronger in some area of our life. Uh, you might see this as being similar to uh, athletes who go into the weight room. Uh, you don't go into the weight room just because it's fun, although some people really enjoy it, but you go into the weight room to challenge your body, to stress your body so that it becomes stronger. Uh, that's something that's very easily controlled. Emotional situations, stressful social situations like this are maybe more, may more chosen for us, but the same principle applies. And so we're going to decide that we're going to stay active, we're going to do new things, we're going to intentionally get stronger. There's lots of good examples of what you can do. For example, um, get outside and stay active physically. That's really important. Don't just sit in one place all day. Uh, do some things outside. I, the best as I understand it, nobody's getting the COVID-19 virus by taking a walk around the block or uh, taking the dog for a walk. Um, you can even actually talk to people outside. It's not a bad thing. So get outside. We're going to stay active and keep our minds active by doing something that challenges us. Perhaps, um, I know this would be a challenge, but maybe we're going to read a book. Uh, maybe we're going to get off of our screens that numb us into uh, kind of a, a sense of lethargy of not having any energy. We're not going to spend all our time just playing mindless uh, games. We're going to really do something intellectually that's going to challenge us. Uh, maybe we're going to take up a, a new hobby. Maybe we're going to uh, start learning to paint or start learning to draw. Um, maybe we're going to learn an instrument. Uh, there's all kinds of things that we can do, but we're going to resist sitting and getting numb to what's happening around us, and we're going to stay active. Because bad situations like these happen. This is a part of the life that we've been given, and not everybody grows stronger out of them. Some people just default to inactivity, to neutral, to feeling like they're a victim to a circumstance. We're going to resist that. We're going to work hard to build strong relationships within our family, to support family and friends that are outside of our homes. There's ways to do that through social media, through the internet. And we're going to use this time to build a stronger brain, to build a stronger emotional strength, and to be able to return to school when it opens, and be able to return to so-called normal life when that happens in a little bit better shape than we were when we went into this. So those are just some general concepts about getting stronger. Uh, a couple specific things that you might want to do. You can start thinking about that. Tomorrow we're just going to talk a little bit more about the kinds of things we need to build more stability and more strength in our lives and get into some more suggestions and details. Uh, once again, I'm uh, totally accessible to you. You got my email in the comments below. Please use that. Uh, take time to get in touch with me and let me know what's going on with you and your family. And if there's any questions that you have that you'd like me to address, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, again, we'll be talking a little bit more tomorrow about some of the normal emotions you might expect to uh, encounter during this time and start exploring what to do about some of those specific emotions. So all the best to you guys. I love you guys. I thank you for the Bellevue community. I've embraced and accepted me through these years and delighted to spend these days with you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow.